1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I do have a Thanksgiving message tonight <laughs> that the Lord gave me. Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about this tonight. And, um, the Lord's given me some good things and, and was showing me some things this week as I was praying about this and preparing for this. And, um, and, and we're going to get into it. You're believing with me, right? He's going to help us. My heart is full. You know, I... <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to just do single messages. <laughs> you know, I get on a message and I think, well, this could be a series just right here. I got three messages right here. We could spend time talking about that. And that's why it's so important that, you know, early on in ministry, I used to make the mistake of feeling like if I didn't say everything that I had, then the Lord didn't get done what he wanted to get done. But we don't have to say everything. We just need to say the things that he once said for tonight. And uh, so I, I was, I'm believing him that he's going to help me with that. And, and I was even asking him that when I was preparing. And I know you're believing with him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And let's look at verse 18 here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says this, In everything give thanks. Let's say that together. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. The rest of the verse says that. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. The Amplified Bible says, thank God in everything. No matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks. The CEB said, give thanks in every situation. So that would be when things are going good, when things are going bad. What, what should we hear coming out of your and my mouth? Thank you, Lord. Now, people have misinterpreted this scripture and other scriptures, and they'll read it like, <laughs> like this. It says, uh, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And they'll read it like this. Everything that's happening to you is the will of God. So just give thanks. And that is wrong doctrine, wrong understanding. Everything that's happening down here is not the will of God. <laughs> um, there's a lot of stealing, killing, destroying going on down here. And none of it is God's will. None of it. So it's not saying that everything that's happening to you is God's will, so just be thankful. It's saying in every circumstance, give thanks. Now, if something's going bad, you can say, Lord, thank you for turning this around. Right? <laughs> With sickness on your body, you can say, Lord, thank you for healing me. Right? In everything, give thanks. Let's, <laughs> I'm excited about this already. Um, go to Hebrews chapter 13 with me. Hebrews chapter 13, let's look at verse 15. Thanksgiving is an appropriate response in every situation. It's always appropriate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank, and you should do this in, in how many circumstances? In the, when, it's, when things are going good. After God's done something good, that's the time to thank Him. No, we're doing this in every circumstance, right? And Hebrews 13, 15 says this, By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Now, what would that be? What is praise, according to the New Testament? That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. A lot of people think they're a praiser because they like to sing. The way to tell if you're a praiser is if when the music turns off, you keep giving God thanks. Amen. To say you're a praiser, a lot of people interchange that with, I like praise music. That's fine. That's good. If it's scriptural, it's good. <laughs> but being a praiser is not just, it is singing. That's part of praising. But it's the fruit of your lips giving thanks to his name. Right? This is praise. And how often should we be doing this? Anybody see the word up here? Continually. Continually means constantly or always. 
Are you seeing this? Constantly are always. So, you know, and I, I was getting corrected by this when I was, when the Lord was ministering this to me. There shouldn't be more than a few minutes go by that we don't hear me or you go, thank you, Lord. Right? <laughs> Is, are these scriptures true? Does God mean what he says? Should we endeavor to do this then? And should we do it? Not just try to do it, but do it. There shouldn't be more than a few minutes go by where you don't hear me or you go, Lord, thank you for helping me. Thank you for whatever it is, healing me. Thank you for, you know, something pops up in your ear. This is a great way to respond to a worried thought. A worried thought comes up about your kids and you stop and go, thank you, Lord, that you're helping them. Thank you, Lord, that you're ministering to them. Thank you, Lord, tonight you know right where they are. You know right what they need. Your hand's upon it. Thank you, Lord. Can you do that? And you and I should be doing this how often? We should be doing it continually. So how much time does that leave for you to murmur or complain? <laughs> if you're supposed to be doing this all the time, then how much time did God leave for you? You can take this part and you can complain during over here. <laughs> huh? He didn't leave you any time to, to grumble about something because you're supposed to be doing this all the time. Consistently, continually. Can you say amen? amen? Now, why does it call it a sacrifice of praise? Sacrifice, if you look it up, means the word means victim. Say that, victim. <laughs> it means to slaughter or to kill. But it's a sacrifice of praise when your flesh doesn't want to, so it becomes the victim. Crucify your flesh, slaughter your flesh. And that's what makes it a sacrifice of praise because the last thing you want to do when things are going bad is open up your mouth and say, Lord, thank you. Or when it's not working out the way you wanted it to work out, something has to die <laughs> for you to open up your mouth and say thank you. And your flesh needs to be the victim, right? <laughs> Crucify your flesh and you can say, thank you, Lord. Are you always going to feel like saying, thank you, Lord? And here's another thing. Thanksgiving is not a feeling. It is an expression of your gratitude and appreciation for what the Lord has done. Just because you don't feel thankful doesn't mean you can't be thankful. And there'll be a lot of times when you don't feel thankful, and that's when it becomes a sacrifice of praise because you kill your flesh, you crucify your flesh, and you do it anyway. And you can do that when you don't feel thankful. Are you seeing this? I, I was studying this years ago. We got a great series that, that the Lord gave us on this. This has been five or six years ago now. Um, it's on the website, mam.tv. The notes are there. It'd be a great thing to just go back and, and, and study that and look at that. One of the things that the Lord uh, ministered to me in that was that um, a lot of times people, like if I just took a poll tonight, are you thankful? Are you a thankful person? Most of us kind of nod our head and go, yeah, I, I think I'm a thankful person. It's not measured by what you think about yourself. It's measured by how often do you express it. If you have a thankful heart, you're also going to have a thankful mouth. And if you really are a thankful person, it's going to, then, then we, we would hear it hanging out with you. Um, <laughs> we, we went on vacation a couple of times with Pastor Ron and, and Deb. And, and uh, Pastor Ron, you, he won't go, I mean, if you go on vacation with him, and he probably does it at home, I'm just not around him all the time when he's home. But on vacation, he'll, he'll say it probably, I don't know. I mean, if, it's an, if I'm under, overestimating, I don't know. But 30 to 40 times the week you're gone, he'll look at you and go, we're so blessed. We're, and he'll smile and say, we're so blessed. And, I, and I'm so carnal. The first year that he did that and I was with him, I was like, how many times is he going to say we're blessed? <laughs> you know, you just have these thoughts. But then I picked up on something. And this year we didn't go on vacation with him. And you know what? I looked at Amber about 10, 15 times. I said, you know what? We're so blessed. <laughs> we're, we're so blessed. Is that good? Should you do it? And uh, we should be thankful. And we should express our appreciation. And if you truly are thankful, and that's why he was expressing it, because he was thankful. And uh, I, we and Amber laughed about that because I said, you know, go on vacation. Your dad says that about 40 times. I got a revelation. I started, I said, I'm going to be just like him <laughs> on this vacation. And, I'm a, and it, man, it just, 
Every time you say it and you smile, then, and then Amber started looking at me and going, you know what, we're so blessed, aren't we? <laughs> and then Faith would have a meltdown and we'd go, we're so blessed. <laughs> That's when you need to say it. Actually, we, we would start singing a song when we... She would, <laughs> when she would do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's good. You, it needs to be expressed. And you should do this when? In every circumstance. And how frequently? All the time. Right? Let's go to another verse. Go to Colossians chapter 3 with me. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Ephesians 5.20 said, Giving thanks always. That's the same idea as continually. Now that verse actually said, giving thanks always, this is Ephesians 5.20, you're going to Colossians 3.15. Ephesians 5.20 said, giving thanks always for all things unto God. And then a lot of times people get that same idea, well, I'm supposed to give God thanks for everything that happens to me. You can't thank God for doing something he didn't do, right? I mean, you can't come and thank me for cutting your grass if I didn't cut it. And you can't thank God for destroying something in your life when he didn't do it. But you thank God always for all the good things that he's done for you, right? Always is continually. Now, Colossians 3.15 says this. It says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And then we can just skip down to the bottom of that verse. And it says this. It says, be ye thankful. Do you notice he didn't say try to be? And he didn't say feel thankful. <laughs> He said, be thankful. This is coming in the form of command, is it not? He's telling you to do it. This is God talking to you and me, right? Inspired by the Holy Spirit, these scriptures written. Does he expect you and me to be thankful? He does. Skip it down to verse 17. And verse 17 says this, And whatsoever you do in word and in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So what's it saying? Whatever you do, do it giving thanks. What if you don't like what you're doing? <laughs> Should you give thanks? A couple years ago, I was, you know, the Lord will call you to do some stuff that you don't like to do. <laughs> Two amens and one grunt. <laughs> Yeah. You, you follow the Lord. You really endeavor that you're going to follow Him. He's going to send you some places you don't want to go, doing some stuff you don't want to do, and probably being around some people you don't want to be around. And what you find out is that's just your immaturity in your flesh. <laughs> but he's got, He'll send you to do some things for Him. I was doing something one time and I told Amber, I said, I don't mind doing this. I just like to complain while I do it. Something the Lord told me to do. I don't mind doing it, I just like to complain the whole time while I do it. And I got a revelation, the Lord said, that doesn't count. You, you might as well just stay home, if that's your attitude. Because God's not just looking at the activity, He's looking at the heart. <laughs> and that's what's most important to Him. Um, whatever you do, whether you like it or not, can you do it being thankful? Anybody have to do any things in their life you don't really like to do? <laughs> What, what, while you're doing it, what, what should we hear you doing? Thank you, Lord, for giving me the ability to pay these bills or to cut this grass. Or Are you seeing this? Whatever you do, do it giving thanks. The Message Bible said cultivate thankfulness in verse 15. Say that, cultivate thankfulness. <laughs> it grows. In you. That's what I found out when we did the, the series. When I started on that series about being thankful. This was back in 2011. I was, I was studying one day and, and God's starting to give me revelation this. And I had this thought. I said, I'm probably one of the most unthankful people on the planet. <laughs> I just thought, I, I'm never expressing thanksgiving. And, and what I found is it can be cultivated on the inside of me. It has a snowball effect. Sometimes it takes you a little while to get going, but once you get going, it'll start to grow on the inside of you. You'll start thanking God for everything, right? But, but it's, it's, it's cultivating, so it'll grow over time. Cultivate thankfulness. And then the rest of that verse, in verse 17 in the Message Bible, said, thanking God every step of the way. 
thanking God every step of the way. Now go with me to Philippians chapter 2. So now come on, you're supposed to thank God in every circumstance, continually, whatever you're doing. In every circumstance, giving thanks, continually giving thanks, and whatever I'm doing, giving thanks. Are you seeing this? Come on, say this with me. In every circumstance, all the time, no matter what I'm doing, giving thanks. This is strong talk, isn't it? That he's telling you in every circumstance, all the time, whatever you're doing. It sounds like he's trying to get something across to you and me. I mean, what you notice when you read these verses and when it comes to giving thanks, what will strike you is the constancy and the intensity that God requires in regards to it. In every circumstance, all the time, no matter what I'm doing, that, that's some intensity and some consistency. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> and, and he has purpose for this, and, and you'll see this as we go tonight. Now here's one on the other side. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Now hold on to the pew. <laughs> Do all things without murmuring. Say this with me. Grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> Type that in if you're watching it online. You can laugh with us. Do all things without murmuring. Without it. Let me uh, read this to you out of the Living Bible. In everything you do, stay away from complaining. Stay away from it. Come on. Stay away from complaining. And do, do in everything you do, do it without murmuring. Come on, can, can you get watching the TV and watching some of these political shows? And what, and what, what will you start to hear? Grumble, grumble, grumble. Now, what are they doing on these shows that you're watching so much of? Are they thanking the Lord? <laughs> what you uh, behold, you are going to become. He said, you mean I can't watch the news? Watch what you need to watch so you know what's going on and then turn it off. Nobody needs to watch the news five, six, eight hours a day. Because all you're going to hear is unsaved, or if they are saved, let me not get, get too, <laughs> I'll say ignorant people, <laughs> on there complaining about what the Democrats are doing, complaining about what the Republicans are doing, and you don't need that pumping into your spirit all day. And the problem is, like a Twinkie, your flesh likes it. <laughs> your flesh likes to watch all that stuff. And your flesh likes to get mad too. It does. Otherwise, you would, you'd just turn it off. <laughs> Come on. Can, can you just, can you, you can, what'll happen is you'll get sucked into that thing. And, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's biting, and it's angry, and it's, and it's bitter. And then you sit there and watch that for four or five hours a day and you think you're just going to be able to go through your day praising and thanking the Lord? <laughs> and if you are watching it, you better have your Thanksgiving gun full of your Thanksgiving bullets. And when they get mad, when they're telling you what's going on, you need to smile back and go, thank you, Lord, for helping us. Thank you, Lord, for moving in the country. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of that. Th thank you, thank you. You're, you're working, you're, you're moving. Because <laughs> you don't want that stuff to get in you. <laughs> Come on, can you, can you grumble? Can you get unthankful watching television or doing something that's going to mean nothing in the realm of eternity like playing golf hmm now i'm giving you a personal example here <laughs> huh like like you're so you're getting you're grumbling about something that's never going to matter in the end we need to do all things and do them with, with uh, without what without without murmuring without complaining um are most people living like this? Come on, what do we say? We said, in every circumstance, all the time, whatever you're doing, give thanks and, and do all you do without murmuring. Is this how most people are living? You just go out there in the world. Is this what you're going to hear? Let's ask this question. Is this how most believers are living? <laughs> now, those were easy, but let's ask this one. Is this how you and me are living? Because that's the one that matters. <laughs> 
So, if, if you're not doing this already, the Lord would help you, wouldn't He? To grow and to come up. We don't need to beat ourselves up about this. We need to turn our thanksgiver on. Right? And turn our thanksgiver up. And we need to turn the complaining and the murmuring off. How many of you like to hear people complain? You just, you call people and say, just complain a little bit. Just, just, I, I just like it. This does something for me to hear you complain. What makes you think anybody likes to hear you complain? <laughs> if you don't like to hear them complain. And I tell you who really doesn't like to hear it is the Lord. Right? Now, he still loves you, <laughs> but he doesn't like it. This murmuring, this complaining. I believe the Lord, even tonight, just as we're setting a little time aside just for tonight, I believe he could stir some things up in you and me, and we could get this going back in the right direction and be thankful. Now, this is why a lot of times he'll have us camp on a series for this purpose, because it helps to renew our mind and gets us focused for weeks and months on a time in this vein. Well, I don't think we're going to do that. So we're going to believe in that he's going to stir some things up tonight that would get you really shot off in the right direction, that after you're done eating your turkey on Thursday and your turkey leftovers on Friday, the Thanksgiving would continue, <laughs> right? Okay. Now, let's go to, uh, is the Lord helping you already? <laughs> go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, if he told you to do it in every circumstance, then you can. If he told you to do it all the time, then you can. And if he told you to do it, no matter what you're doing, then you can. You can be thankful, right? Now, Thanksgiving, uh, this, was, this was powerful, what the Lord showed me with this. I just enjoyed him doing this. I hadn't seen it like this. But um, why, why was God, why the constancy, why the consistency when it comes to Thanksgiving? Why did God talk about Thanksgiving like this? I mean, in every circumstance, all the time, whatever you're doing, why, why did he talk about this like this? Is it because God just likes to be appreciated? <laughs> you ever do something for somebody and say, well, you at least could have said thanks. Huh? Huh? You ever or had that thought? They could at least say thank you. Well, if you need them to say thank you, then you weren't doing it by grace because grace requires nothing in return. You don't owe me anything. I just want to do it to bless you. Now tell people thanks when they do something nice for you. But is that how God is? At least you could do said thanks. So he commands you over and over again to tell, tell him thanks? Because he, he just likes to be appreciated. Or how about this? Does he need your appreciation <laughs> and your validation? Does it, does it make him something that he's not? <laughs> no. So, so why? why? Why would he talk about this like this? Well, one of the reasons is because Thanksgiving has... A, it's one activity, but it has multiple positive effects. It's, it's akin to physical exercise. I did this just for a little bit today. You go do some study, uh, studying, you can just Google it, the benefits of physical exercise. And what they'll tell you is they'll tell you that it'll, it, it helps to prevent disease. It helps to improve your mood. It helps you to learn better, to think better. It promotes better sleep. It helps you to live longer. Come on, any of those sound good? And one activity can have all those different effects. Help you sleep better. Help you be in a better mood. Right? Help you to live longer. Help you to prevent disease. Are you getting convicted? Everybody's face just dropped. Is nobody in here exercising? <laughs> I'm not talking about exercise. I'm talking about one activity. And you exercise. And then all of a sudden, you're in a better mood. And you're sleeping better at night. Right? And you live longer. Well, you only did one thing, but it had all these different arms going out, all these positive effects. This is what Thanksgiving is spiritually. It's one activity, but it'll have all these different effects in your life. One of the things that you, and, and this is a part where we could go in to start talking about a series of teachings on this, so I'm just going to go through these quickly. One of the things that Thanksgiving does is that it'll affect the level of your faith. Thanksgiving, well, at, when you're thanking the Lord, you're feeding your faith and you're exercising your faith and it'll cause your faith to grow, being thankful. There's a scripture in Romans chapter 4 that said that 
uh, Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. One translation says, giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God is not only evident that you're strong in faith, it's how you get strong. If you say, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that I'm redeemed from the curse. You are thanking him for what the word says about you. So you're hearing the word as you're thanking him. How does faith come? By hearing. You're feeding your own faith when you start thanking him. And not only that, you're exercising your faith because a lot of times it takes faith just to say, thank you, Lord. Particularly in a hard time when things aren't going well, when you start saying, thank you, Lord, then you're using your faith. And if you feed it and you use it, it grows. And all that happens when you go, Lord, thank you for helping me. That's happening. Faith is growing. Not only that, when you're thanking the Lord, where, who, where and who is your mind on? It's on Him. And to be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. And if you keep your mind stayed on the Lord, Isaiah 26 said, He'll keep you in perfect peace. So what's another resulting effect of thanksgiving? Peace. Come on, would it really affect your peace? Would it really affect your faith? Just doing what? Just, just having this on your heart all the time. Lord, thank you. <laughs> thank you for helping. I was doing this where the message was concerned because I was, I was getting tripped up a little bit yesterday afternoon. I had some things, but just wouldn't come together. So I, I decided to do what I was going to preach on. <laughs> That's a revelation, right? I'm going to put this into practice right now. And I started saying, Lord, thank you for, for helping me. Thank you for giving this to me. Thank you for helping me to get it, helping me to see it. Thank you, Lord. And as I did it, I started to believe that even more. And then, and then, you know, I mean, if you don't have your message ready, you know, just like you want it, that can start to try to rob you of your peace. Well, then I got happy and I got peaceful. <laughs> and my faith is growing. And, and what did I do? What did I, what did I do? I just started engaging Thanksgiving and it just, it's the effects. Many different effects. Come on, when you're thankful, what else happens? You get happy, don't you? <laughs> Isaiah 51 verse 3 talked about the, the connection between gladness and thanksgiving. And, and when, when you get thankful, you get happy. And joy starts to come up, right? And the more joyful you get, the joy of the Lord is your... So you get stronger by being thankful, right? <laughs> you know what else happens when you get thankful? You get smarter. Now listen, this is a, this is a verse in Romans chapter 1. It said, these people weren't thankful and their foolish heart was darkened. The, the, the more unthankful you are to the Lord the dumber you get. Till people will say things like this, God ain't ever done anything good for me. Huh? That's about one of the dumbest things you can say. Only thing dumber than that is, God doesn't even exist. And that's where unthankfulness will take you. You know, if you go far enough with it, you won't even acknowledge there is a creator. Why? The more thankful you are, you get wiser, don't you? <laughs> Why? Because you're in that presence and atmosphere of the Lord and the Holy Spirit's there and He could reveal things to you when you get thankful and help you. Come on, there are a lot of good things that can happen just from you being and, and expressing thanksgiving. You get strong, you get happy, your faith comes up, you get full of joy, full of peace. <laughs> and this can be right in the middle of things that really aren't going the way you want them to go. And this is important because if you want to get things going the way you want to go, you need to be strong in all these things. Right? There's another instance um, in, you, you remember the story in, in Luke chapter uh, 17 where the leper got cleansed. The ten got cleansed as they went. They got cleansed and then one came back. Many of you know this. And he gave thanks. And then the Lord said, your, your faith's made you whole. Um, if you don't value or appreciate what the Lord has given you, he's not going to give you more of it. Are you hearing me? Yep. So if you don't value the, the, uh, the, whatever it is, financial provision, whatever he's done for you, if you don't value what he's, what he's given to you, why would he give you more of it when you act like you don't appreciate or care about the little bit he has given you? Are you seeing this? One of the, one of the biggest ways that you qualify for more is that you value and appreciate and express thanks to the Lord for what he's given you. 
I mean, if the Lord gives me great revelation and I just go, okay, all right, and I don't think about it anymore, why should he give me more? He won't, will he? But if I make much of what he has given me, would he give me more? Why? Because I'm thankful. I appreciate it. And this is another thing Thanksgiving does. It qualifies you and positions you for God to do more in your life. Is that good news? So there's all kinds of good things. Being thankful, do all kinds of resulting effects. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, religion's ability to water things down and drain them of their power never ceases to amaze me. Religion will take something like Thanksgiving and it'll turn it into just, it's a polite response. And it's the nice Christian thing to do. And you know, we should all, we should all try to be thankful. And that's about all that you'll hear. You know, religion will, will want you to... to to, they'll require the activity, but they won't tell you about the powerful results because they don't believe in anything. But this, the results of Thanksgiving are powerful. They're life-changing. And in the world, you know, Thanksgiving's a holiday. And Thanksgiving is now becoming even a self-help principle. You, you read a lot of self-help pe- of these books and these life coaches, and they're, they're teaching gratitude. Why? Because they got it from the Bible and they see it works. And then, like I said, in religion, it's a pro- polite response It's the Christian thing to do, but in reality, thanksgiving is a spiritual force. It is a weapon, and it is our lifestyle. It's a weapon. You start opening up your mouth and giving God thanks. Anybody remember the verse that said, praise stills the avenger? Well, what is praise? One main thing praise is, is the fruit of your lips giving thanks to his name. This is a weapon, is it not? I mean, he's doing all he can to try to cause all hell to break loose in your life, and you look at him and all you do is go, Lord, thank you for helping me. Thank you for, you, you were faithful in the past. Thank you that you're faithful now. Thank you for the victory you're going to give me. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your help. I mean, what's he even going to do with you? He just stops and goes... <laughs> When, when they're done, I'll start. Well, don't be done. Amen. Right? It's a weapon. So let's not water this down and just, well, you know, it's just, you know, it's just polite. Well, it is polite, but it's more than that. Well, it's just, it's just nice. It's, it's what Christians should do. You know, we should be thankful. No, it's our lifestyle. It's a weapon. You, you can put it in your little spiritual pouch and pull it out and fire it. And it'll work. And it'll affect your peace and it'll affect your joy and it'll affect your faith and it'll affect your strength and that thing will start snowballing. Can you say amen to this? It's not a light thing. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. Now this is interesting. This is talking about the last days. And 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. It says that in the last days perilous times will come. And um, it starts to list a bunch of different things that we're going to see in the last days. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Is that wicked? That's evil, isn't it? Covetous. Is that wicked? Come on, you hear, you hear loving your own self and covetous, and you, just, you start to just kind of bristle up, don't you? That's bad. Wicked. Boasters. Come on, is pride bad? Proud? It's the nature of the devil. Blasphemers, disobedience to, pa- disobedient to parents. And then right in the middle of all this, you have this word, unthankful. <laughs> and then it goes on, unholy. Keep going, verse 3. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That, that means inhumane. Truth breakers, they don't keep their word. False accusers, incontent, fierce despisers, those that are good. And go, keep going, keep, let's just keep reading. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Has all this bad stuff, and then right in the middle has this word, unthankful. Are you seeing this? Now, why is this? Because as, as we near Jesus' return, now whatever you believe about that, he is coming back. I think we can all agree on that. The world is going to get worse and worse. They're going to become more... Uh, like they're going to become more like their, their, their father, the one they're following, and it's going to be more intense. And one of the things that's going to happen is they're going to become more unthankful. 
and people are going to become more unthankful. And the reason is, is because that's who the enemy is. He is the one that's inspiring this bitter discontent, this, this, um, this heaviness, this dissatisfaction. He's the one that inspires this. He's the one that inspires you to furrow your brow, scrunch your nose up, and grumble about something. And the more you yield to him, the more that you're going to do. And we need to not look at like, you know, we, we laugh and, and, and that's okay. The, you know, the Lord's talking to us about some of this. But this grumbling and complaining, this is no light thing. This is you and me yielding to our adversary, acting like him. We're not going to do that. Acting like him. Is it funny? Is it light? No, it's not funny. It's not. It's acting like him. And as time goes on, it's going to get worse and worse. So the more thankful we are, the brighter you and me are going to shine. Right? <laughs> you know, you can shine pretty bright by just being thankful and smiling. <laughs> right? And the darker it gets, the more stuff like that will stand out. But, but the reason is because the enemy is inspiring this. Now go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Come on, when you're grumbling, who are you acting like? You're acting like him. I mean, he was made the anointed cherub, wasn't he? I mean, he, he could have been thankful for what he had and what he was. But he wasn't. And he wanted more, and it cost him, didn't he? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse 6 here. Everybody doing okay so far? Thank you, Lord. It says, now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after the evil things as they lusted. Keep going. Verse 7 says this. It says in verse 7, neither be ye idolaters. I, I, I got just ahead of myself. Verse 5 says this, but with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these were our examples, that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. Neither should we be idolaters as some of them were. Verse 8, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. So what do we got? We got lusting, idolatry, fornication. Verse 9, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Now we got tempting God, we got fornication, we got lust, we got idolatry, and then in verse 10 he says, neither murmur. Don't complain. It's almost like one of these things don't belong. Because idolatry, that's serious. And fornication, that's serious. And tempting the Lord and lust, that stuff's serious. Well, what about this murmuring stuff? Is this in the right category? Come on, would you say that murmuring is as serious as idolatry? <laughs> it looks all over the room. Fornicating and murmuring together. Now see, you don't like that. We don't like that because maybe you're not fornicating, but you do murmur. <laughs> right? What's the Lord doing? He's getting us to see the weight of this. And the reason it's so weighty it's because you're yielding to your adversary. You're acting like your enemy. You're yielding to wrong spirits. And whatever spirits you yield to, you give place to in your life. Come on, when you got saved and you started yielding to the Holy Spirit, did he start having some influence and some impact in your life? And what happened because you yielded to him, your life started getting better. You started getting better. Are you seeing this? Well, what happens if you yield to a wrong spirit? You give him place, and what's he want to do? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's why the same reason you should stay away from all that other stuff is the same reason you should stay away from this murmuring. Now, what did they do? They were murmured, and they were destroyed. Do these two go together? Murmuring opens you up to destruction. It gives place to the destroyer, to come in and try to destroy you and me. Why? Because when you yield to that spirit, you give that spirit place to function in your life. Come on, we're not going to do it though, are we? 
We need to resist murmuring and resist complaining like we would, like we would stand against idolatry or fornication. How much, how much idolatry should we accept? Well, the Lord understands. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm going to have a little idolatry. <laughs> huh? I mean, try, what if I told Amber that tonight? You know, Amber, a little fornication, it's okay. No big deal. You know, just once or twice every now and again. Should we accept any of that? No, we accept none of it. No lust, no fornication. How much murmuring should we accept and just be okay with? And if you are murmuring and are complaining, what do you need to do? You need to stop. You need to quit because you're yielding to a spirit that you don't want to give access to. Come on, can you say amen to this? Thank you, Lord. Now, why were, why, and I'll, I'll start to wind this down tonight here. Why were they destroyed? You can read verses like this and go, well, God got tired of their murmuring. So he unloaded on them <laughs> and just had them destroyed. Well, it didn't say they were destroyed of God. It said they were destroyed of the destroyer. That's not the Lord. Why were they destroyed? Because, oh, stick with me here. What is our victory in this life? How are you and I going to overcome? Faith is the victory. And it's how you and I overcome in this life. And this is something about faith, and this is something you mark or write down if you want to. Faith never murmurs. Never. Never. I need to say it again. Faith never murmurs. It never complains. They were complaining. They, he's talking about the children of Israel. They're complaining on the outside of the wilderness. They're complaining, why did God bring us out here? Why did Moses bring us out here? We're going to die. We want to go back to Egypt. They're complaining because they have no expectation that God's going to help them, that God's going to strengthen them, that God's going to give them the victory. They believe nothing, and that's why they're murmuring. That's why they're complaining. And faith never does this. In fact, one verse, we won't go there, but in Psalm 106, it said, they believed not his word and murmured in their tents. These two go together. When you're murmuring, you're murmuring for the same reason. You don't believe His Word. Come on, if you really believe God was for you tonight, <laughs> if you believe He was big enough to take care of your problem, and if you believe that He didn't, wouldn't leave you and wouldn't forsake you, and if you believe that He was going to strengthen you and help you and be your keeper and your provider and your healer and your deliverer, what do you have to complain about? Your response would be, thank you, Lord, for healing me, providing for me. See, this is what faith does. The complaining comes because the believing stopped. And when you don't believe His Word, there's the only thing, well, you know, grumble, 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 grumble. But when you believe His Word, <laughs> huh? What, what's the next thing we're going to hear? Lord, thank you. There's only one response when you start reading those scriptures. <laughs> oh, thank you. And it's by grace. I don't even deserve it. Lord, you said that you're on my side? <laughs> I should not fear what man can do unto me? Thank you. <laughs> if you believe it, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Faith doesn't murmur. Faith doesn't complain. Faith doesn't do that. Never. Why? Because when you're in faith, you're believing and expecting, God's going to do something real good. Even if I am in a bad situation, faith says he's going to turn it around. So rather, see, rather than murmuring about what's happening, you can be thankful that God can change what's happening. And if you believe he is then you would be thankful, wouldn't you? you? Got any faith people in here tonight? If you really are a faith person, then you're also going to be a person that if we just snuck up on you tomorrow, well, let's pick a different day because everybody's saying thank you tomorrow. If we snuck up on you on next Thursday and just followed you around, we would hear you going all day, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping my kids. Thank you for ministering to them. Thank you for speaking to them. And can you do that when it looks like nothing's happening? When I was saying, Lord, thank you for helping me to get the message and get the revelation, I didn't have any at that time. But why am I saying thank you? Because I believe he's going to give it to me. He's going to show me. Come on, let's say it together. Faith, faith. Never, 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 never murmurs. murmurs. Never. 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 <laughs> And what happened in the, in the, in the, with the children of Israel? The people that murmured, what did they do? They died out in the wilderness. 
But there was a couple that didn't murmur, right? <laughs> Joshua and Caleb, no murmur. They didn't murmur, and they saw miracles, didn't they? Josh, Caleb, uh, Caleb told Joshua, I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago. Come on, say miracle. Miracle. They went in and possessed land that in the natural, they had no natural might or strength to really possess, but they got it. That's a miracle. But where were the murmurers when all these miracles were going on? In the grave. And here's another statement for you. Murmurers don't see miracles. Murmurers don't see miracles. I heard this statement, this minister said this. I've heard him say it so many times. It's, it's been deposited in me. <laughs> the Lord just, the Lord, and then the Lord reminded me of it today. Doubt despairs, complains, and is sad. Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. I'm going to read that to you again. Doubt despairs, complains, and is sad. Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. Do you believe it? Now, let's put 2 Corinthians, I think I've got two more places to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, let's put that on the screen. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that says this, Thanks be unto God which gives us the victory and always causes us to triumph. Say that with me, always causes us to triumph. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Well, always deals with the past, the present, and the future. So they're thanking God for triumphs they're not even walking in yet. Are you seeing this? And a lot of times religion or just, you know, a, a low level of light will teach you that thanksgiving, we thank God for the stuff he has done. And that's good. That's part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we also can thank God in faith for things that haven't manifested just yet. And what you realize in the life of faith, thanksgiving not only precedes victory, it precedes victory. I don't just say thank you after I won. I say thank you before the winning shows up. Right? I say thank you, Lord, for healing me when I can't feel healing. I say, thank you, Lord, for delivering me when I don't look free. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening me when I still feel weak. Come on, is this what you do when you're in faith? And faith does this all the time. I mean, what do you do after you pray? I mean, if you, the James, 1 John 5 says, if you pray in line with the Lord's will, He hears you and He grants you your petition. Now, there's different kinds of prayers, so let me say that. But for, for prayers like that, when you're going petitioning the Lord for things that are in line with His will, what do you do after you asked and believed you received? Thank you, Lord. Right? And that you, you get in a prayer room a lot of times, and that's what you hear a lot of people, even in intercessory prayer, a lot of times you'll hear the people praying, decreeing some, and then they'll come in some thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Right? And can you thank God for a victory that you don't see yet? <laughs> for a healing you don't feel yet? For, for money you don't have yet? And why would you do that? Because you have faith in Him. Right? Come on, if I told you next week, when there's some money coming into me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write you a $5,000 check next week. What would you probably do immediately I said that? Somebody said, I would cry and, and wrap my arms around your neck. <laughs> well, what else would you, you would say? Thank you. Now, have you seen it yet? Do you, do you have the money? No, but you have faith in me that I'm going to do what I said. And this is the same thing with the Lord. Come on, can, should you be thanking him right now in the middle of the hard time, in the middle of the test, in the, when the circumstances are bad, can you thank the Lord for the victory that maybe isn't manifested. You, should, you can and you should be, and it's a big key to walking and living by faith. Now, last verse. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. You doing okay? Oh, <coughs> Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's put uh, Ephesians 5 on the screen there. You guys are going to Ephesians chapter, or Hebrews chapter 12. Thank you, Lord. You're believing with me still, right? <laughs> Just got a little bit of time left, but I want to make sure we say what these parts that the Lord wants us to say. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. 
it, it says this, it tells us that we can replace, Ephesians 5 verse 4, it says that, verse 4, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So he's talking about what you say and how you talk. And he's saying rather than, than all this jesting and this foolish means godless talk, rather than that, what are we going to replace that with? Giving of thanks. Can you and I, can we replace all of our, the stuff coming out of our mouth that we shouldn't be saying, do we have something to replace it with? We do, don't we? And you can replace all your, you ever, you ever had a, a problem talk session? You talk to somebody about your problem for 45 minutes. You need to replace that. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Thank you for helping her. Thank you for grace for the situation. Thank you that you're moving. Would that do more for you than sitting there and camping on, so the Lord gives you something to replace it with? What are you going to replace it with? You're going to replace it with giving of thanks. And one of the telltale signs that you really are in faith is that you're saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you. A lot of times people say, well, I'm, I'm believing. I'm, you know, they'll talk about their problem for 45 minutes. I'm believing the Lord's going to do this or I'm believing the Lord's going to do that. Just because you say you're believing doesn't mean you are believing. <laughs> One of the main evidences that you really are believing is you'll start saying, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing it. I thank you, Lord, that you're helping them. I thank you, Lord, that you're delivering us and ministering to us and giving us the victory. Come on, can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, now let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and we'll close with this tonight. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. The enemy does not just want to get you, you know, the enemy doesn't just want to get you to complain for a few seconds and then go, ha ha, I got you to complain. He's got a bigger plan than that. And one of the things that follows all this complaining, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, let's put that on the screen. This talks about a root of bitterness. That when it gets in you, it'll trouble you and defile you. The word trouble there, uh, trouble you, has to do with annoy you or harass you. And defile has to do with it'll like poison you or pollute you on the inside. Yeah, here's the verse. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. This is where the enemy's wanting to push you with this complaining this grumbling. He's wanting to get you to do this year after year and think it's not a big deal. And then before you know it, you're living in this dissatisfied, discontented state where you're just unhappy because of something you don't have, because something that hasn't happened in your life. I thought this would happen and it didn't. And, and everybody of every walk of life has to keep an eye on this. You're, you're unsatisfied because they have more than you. Drive something nicer. Live in something better. Huh? Uh, got the promotion and you didn't. Ministers got to watch this. Have more partners than you. Have more members than you. And, and it, it can just get down in there and start. And you can get bitter. And you can tell because when somebody else has it, you're not happy about it. Because you want it. And all of us need to be on guard against this. You know, if you talk about something that happened in your life 15 years ago, there's something in you. I'm talking about like a negative experience. You know, like the coach didn't play you or treat you right when you were in high school. You still talk about that? That bitterness is in there. And this is, the, this is what the enemy is endeavoring to do with you and me. Take us to this place where this root of bitterness gets in there and it'll trouble you and defile you. And it'll rob you of your faith and it'll rob you of your peace and it'll rob you of your joy, and you, and you keep at it long enough, it'll com make you completely ineffective for anything the Lord wants to do through you. Come on, do we need to be on guard against this? Well, they didn't treat me right. They didn't do this right. My dad didn't do this when I was young. My mom didn't do this for me. And you can get bitter again in, in there. Instead of being thankful. What's, what's the answer for this? You can be thankful. And it's really the only way to get bitterness out of you. Because the Lord has done some things in your life. And, there's, and, and I tell you this, if you see somebody that's got more, you can find 500 people that got less. Right? And this is, how you, this is how you stay on guard against bitterness. 
And when people get bitter, they get mad, don't they? And they're chafed, and they're mad. <laughs> Come on, and they're frustrated. <laughs> and they're upset. And why? Because something didn't happen. They don't have something. Somebody didn't do me right. And they get bitter. And they get upset. And this is where the enemy is wanting to push you, because as all this increases, this is how the Lord said this to me, um, he wants you to live in this bitter, discontented, thankless state. It's a peaceless, joyless state where faith is low, love is low, humility is low, and vulnerability to the enemy is high. Because he has access because you're yielding to him. And he, he, he'll just pull people around and have them wrapped around his feet. And we got to be on guard against this. Come on, the Lord's done good things in your life. You need to not compare yourself with what he's doing in somebody else's life, and you need to be thankful for what he's done for you. Right? And this is how you stay on guard against bitterness and being bitter. Are you seeing this? Now, Ephesians 5, and then, and then we're done. You know what you need if you're bitter? You need a drink. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you ever felt? Now, look, we're going to read a verse right here in Ephesians 5. That, let's just read it, and then I'll talk about this. Ephesians 5, look at verse 18. Or verse 17 says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Should you know what God's will is? You should, shouldn't you? And be not drunk with wine. Do I need to read this slower? <laughs> now, why, do you, why are we talking about this and even mention this in this part? Of this? this is becoming popular in church. This drinking and getting drunk. Yeah, if some of you are sheltered, you don't know. This is becoming the norm and okay. Now read the verse. Don't be drunk with wine. I mean, let's not get that mixed up. This is not okay. This is not the Lord. But have you ever felt like after a hard day, I need a drink? <laughs> huh? I, I, need, I need this life. You know, that's why a lot of people drink, because this life is too hard for them to take sober. <laughs> So what do they say? They say, I need a drink. I need a drink just to unwind and just, <laughs> I need a drink. And if you get bitter and discontented, you need a drink, but not of wine. You need a drink of the Spirit. Are you seeing this? Do you notice he didn't say don't get drunk? He didn't say don't get drunk. He just said don't get drunk with wine. <laughs> Can you get drunk in the Spirit? Come on, anybody ever been drunk on alcohol? Don't look at me like that. You have. How do you get drunk? You open up your mouth, and you, and you drink, and you get full, and then you get drunk. How are you going to get full of the Spirit? Come on, you're going to take a drink. Some of you are looking at me. I'm, I'm preaching against getting drunk with natural alcohol. I'm talking about getting drunk in the Spirit. And if you get bitter, you ever looked at, I mean, some of you tonight look like you need a drink. <laughs> I mean, smile, brighten up, be happy. You're saved. You're not going to hell. Take a drink. And how do you take a drink of the Spirit? When you yield to Him, you get full of Him. Now, again, I'm, 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 I'm giving you this a little quick. Being filled with the Spirit, this is not talking about being full of the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, like getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, the Spirit comes to live within you. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit comes upon you from the inside. And now the Holy Ghost is on you. But even those people, we need constant fillings. Come on, you can get empty. And when you get empty and you get low, your peace goes, your joy goes, huh? your faith goes. So you need to take a drink. And one of the most important things you can do as a believer is learn how to stay full of the Spirit. If you, get, if you get empty or low on the Spirit, you're no good to anybody, especially yourself. So what can you do? How are you going to get full? You're going to yield to Him. And when you yield to Him, you're going to get full of Him, right? And one of the ways you can take a drink, let's, let's read here. <laughs> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is another thing I hear Pastor Ron doing all the time. I hear them in church sometimes. Pastor Deb does this too. I mean, you, if they're down here at the office, you hear you just walk outside and they're in their office or in the bathroom or something, and you always hear them singing all the time. What are they doing? They're, 
go back. They're making melody. And this is one way you stay full. You sing songs under the Lord, you can make up your own song. And you sing unto Him, and it's not something natural, it's something spiritual, and it's how you stay full. But look what it goes on to say, making melody in your heart, giving thanks. Is giving thanks one of the ways you take a drink and get full? Come on, and, 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 and if things aren't going well in your life tonight, you just need a drink. You just need to open up your mouth and go, Lord, thank you, I'm not going to hell. I tell you that, that's good enough news, <laughs> right? And thank you that I'm still here, and I'm healed, and you still got a good plan for my life. And look, my arms work, and my legs work, and I got, I got, I got a full belly tonight. I got a roof to sleep under. I got heat in my house. And you just do that for a while, and you just start drinking, 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 drinking. <laughs> Drinking, drinking, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you. You can get drunk in the Spirit tonight by giving God thanks. And all, that's how all that bitterness and all that angst about the coach that didn't start you 25 years ago. Are you still talking about this? Get over it. Huh? Get that bitterness out of there. You need a drink. Come on, say it. I need a drink. <laughs> a drink of the Spirit. And I can take a drink by going, Lord, thank you. Come on, take a drink of it. Try it on. Try it on. Say, Lord, thank you. How'd it taste? <laughs> huh? Now you want to see the effects of it, you got to keep going. Thank you, Lord. Thank and, then, and when they got filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 2, people thought they were drunk. So they had some similar looks. They were happy. <laughs> they were full of joy. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you too, this, this, is, this life is too hard to take sober. Spiritually. And that's why you need to take a drink of the Spirit. And you get full of Him and you get full of joy. And whatever you're going through, when you're full of Him, you're happy. And you got strength. And you can get through it if you take enough drinks. That's why it said, don't be, it didn't say don't be drunk, it said don't be drunk with wine, alcohol. Don't be drunk with that. Why? You got something better. <laughs> you got something that'll take you higher. Something that'll make you more happy. And come on, we get full. One of the ways, main ways we take a drink is just by saying, Lord, thank you. Anybody interested? Huh? Getting full? Getting the bitterness out? Staying away from murmuring? Stand to your feet tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Say that with me right now. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you that you have a plan for me. A purpose for me. A hope and a future. Come on, can you, you just do that a little while. What are you doing? I'm taking a drink, man. I'm taking a drink. I've been thinking about all the stuff. I've been drinking the wrong stuff. I've been thinking about all that's not going right, all that's not going good. I got my focus on all the stuff that's not going well or going the way I want it to. I need a drink. I need a drink. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Say it again with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your favor. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you tonight that you're for me, that you're on my side, that you're helping me. You're working in my behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to hell. Thank you, Lord. I'm not in the world anymore. Thank you, Lord. I know you and have a relationship with you and get to walk with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got a good family around me. Thank you, Lord. I got good friends around me. Thank you, Lord. I'm not hungry tonight. Thank you, Lord. I'm not, I'm not in poverty tonight. Thank you, Lord. I live in a free country tonight. Thank you, Lord. I can come to church tonight and praise you and worship you freely. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And all these situations in my life, things that I'm facing, thank you, Lord, that you're giving me the victory. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving in my behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Come on, as you do it, what begins to happen, I start to get full. Because when I yield, when I complain and murmur, I'm yielding to the wrong spirit and giving Him place and getting full of Him. But when I yield to the right spirit by, getting th- by giving thanks, I'm giving Him place, I'm getting full of Him. And when I get full of Him, I get happy. <laughs> and I get strong. And I get full of peace. And what, what came in here looking so big to me and looking so hard to me, you know, if I get drunk enough in the Spirit, it don't look that big. It don't look that hard. <laughs> the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs at the enemy. You need to take a drink and laugh with Him. Take a drink of the Spirit. Get full of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Wasn't this good tonight? Did the Lord help you? Thank you, Lord.